Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to tomorrow. So there's a lot of things that I wanted to discuss today, but the main thing I wanted to talk about is how Aerojet Rocketdyne has two new contracts, one with NASA, one with Boeing, for different spaceflight endeavors. And that's what we're going to be discussing today for this Your Space Pod for December 1st, 2015. So first off, Blue Origin successfully launched a rocket last Monday and then announced it last Tuesday. And I'm very sorry to say that in the last space pod that I made, I reported that the rocket hadn't launched yet. And at the time that I had filmed that space pod, it hadn't been announced yet, so there was no way for me to know. Uh, in any case, I'm very sorry for reporting on outdated information and I'm kicking myself that I didn't wait just a couple more hours or even do it the next day. But in any case, we're going to be talking a lot more in detail about this particular launch and its implications during the next live show. So please tune in for that for more information. Meanwhile, let's talk about those two new contracts that Aerojet Rocketdyne has signed. First, the deal with NASA is worth $1.16 billion to finally start production of the RS-25 engines that will be used to power the core stage of the SLS, the Space Launch System. However, the deal is only to cover the costs of restarting the production line of the RS-25s. Thankfully, Aerojet Rocketdyne is taking advantage of modern production methods and is using 3D printing and digital x-rays and other methods to potentially cut the cost of producing a single RS-25 engine in half. Plus, with these new modern construction methods, they are able to eliminate 700 parts and welds from the engine, making it way less complicated. So what the heck? This is a lot of money to restart the production line for the RS-25s. And if you're like me, I thought they were already building new RS-25 engines. I thought they'd been working on them for years, ever since the Constellation program. Well, that's not necessarily the case. The work that they have been doing on over all these years is to refurbish the 16 remaining RS-25 engines that are left over from the Space Shuttle program. They were originally used for the Space Shuttle main engines. And I am not 100% sure what the status is of the work on those 16 engines. I am assuming and led to believe from the information that I've been reading that they are complete and are ready to be used for the Space Launch System. Those 16 engines engines will be used for the first four launches of the space launch system, four engines for each core stage. So this new contract with NASA might not actually produce any flight engines. The contract lasts from November of 2015 to September of 2024. And again, this is just to cover the costs of restarting the production line, having the staff, the tools, the resources that they need in order to do this. NASA thankfully does have the option under this contract of getting six flight engines. However, I have no idea if that's going to cost NASA more money or if that's covered under this $1.16 billion price tag. I have no idea if this is a cost plus contract or a fixed price contract. I've tried to contact people from both Aerojet, Rocketdyne, and NASA, but at the time of needing to film this, I haven't gotten a response just yet. So I guess we're just going to have to wait and see in the future what this will actually bring about. This is all just the first contract. The second contract is with Boeing and this one is worth $200 million and it will produce the propulsion systems for the CST-100 Starliner service module. Aerojet Rocketdyne has been partnered with Boeing ever since 2010 for this project and have been working together through all the different parts of the design and development of the service module. What this deal is for and what it will produce is seven sets of actual hardware. And included in each one of these sets of hardware is four launch abort engines, 24 orbital maneuvering and attitude control engines, 28 reaction control thrusters, 164 valves, 12 fuel tanks, and more than 500 feet of ducts, lines, and tubing. Boeing will assemble all of these pieces at their processing facility they're leasing in Cape Canaveral. Now of these seven sets, some of them will be used on the qualification test vehicle, the pad abort test, and the first orbital test flight of the CST-100 vehicle. Which makes me think about a couple of different things. Now, disclaimer, this is just speculation on my part, but if these three sets are going to be used for those different three missions, that leaves four more sets left over for more CST-100 flights. 
And maybe this is a way that we can tell how many actual crewed flights that NASA has ordered from Boeing. And if that's the case, then there's only four flights on the books so far. And I was wondering why there's only seven sets of hardware and why it's this kind of fixed price contract. But if there's only four flights on the books so far for actual crewed flights, then it totally makes sense. If I were Boeing, or at least a project manager at Boeing, I wouldn't want to spend more money on more hardware that doesn't have a guarantee of actually flying. So again, this is just speculation on my part. Another reason that they're only ordering seven sets is maybe some sort of allowance that Boeing is setting for itself of how much money they're going to spend at a time on hardware. So could be any of those things, but... Yeah makes me wonder about those crewed flights. But in any case, I want to know what you guys think about these two new deals that Aerojet Rocketdyne has snagged. Do you think that it's BS that they're getting so much money to restart the RS-25 engines? Or do you think that it's fair? I want to know what you think and why. Something else that I should mention about the RS-25s is they have built some new ones, but those will not be engines that will be flying. Those are used to recertify the rocket engine because it is a new engine. It's the RS-25 2.0. Its official designation is the RS-25E for expendable. So, I mean, they do have to go through the full gamut of tests to recertify the engine, especially since the engine is going to be used for crewed launches. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense of all this different work and all this different information that we've been getting over the years of the new RS-25 engines. But those are not the flight engines that will be used. So... What do you think about that? Also, what do you think about the deal with Boeing? Do you think that I'm right in my speculation that the remaining four sets are going to be used for crewed flights? Or do you think that there's another reason? Also, tell me what you think and why about that. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you are willing and able, please consider contributing to our Patreon campaign. We have it set up in a new way so that instead of paying per video, the donations are per month, and we have new goals set for that as well. And starting January, we might be having space pods a little bit less frequently, so please check it out, look at what the new rewards are, and if you can, please donate to that, and we'll be able to continue making great space pods like this. Again, thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and hopefully you know just a little bit more today than you did yesterday thanks to tomorrow. Keep moving onwards and upwards, everybody, and I will see you in the future.